Today on JD Cars, we're gonna be installing an Apple CarPlay MMI from Motive Supplies on our BMW 3 Series. So as many of you know, the BMW 3 Series, the F30 here, had two navigation options. You could have a basic navigation system or the larger screen as we have in the JD Cars F30. But both of these screens have something in common. From BMW, they both have the proprietary iDrive system. They share some features. This larger navigation package has some additional features, but at the end of the day, they're both a pretty basic system. Yes, this has Bluetooth audio, but it has its hiccups. It's not very intuitive, and you can't really send text messages or accomplish much with the BMW voice control. It's just it wasn't that great back in 2012. Now, lucky for us, Motive Supplies actually offers a CarPlay box, an MMI multimedia interface that incorporates into this factory screen. So we don't have to replace the entire head unit, the entire screen. We'll just be adding an extra box, which will sit right here behind the dash, and that will actually enable CarPlay on this factory screen, which I'm super excited for. So without any further ado, let's jump into the garage here and see what we get in the box. So this is the box you'll receive your Motive MMI in. Kind of an Apple-like experience. We got the slow reveal. Right off the bat, a little thank you card from Motive Supplies. So we got two cards in here. We got a business card with some contact info, and we also have a multi-language card with English on one side, which is much appreciated. A few helpful links here to reviews and install guides. And now back to the main event, the MMI here, I believe this is it right here. Oh yeah. So the MMI comes in a nice little bubble wrap bag, keeping it protected. And this feels this feels really high quality compared to some other units I've reviewed, which are just all plastic. This has a full metal enclosure. The build quality feels great. Everything is really nicely labeled, as you can see here. Diving a little deeper into the box, we have all of our wiring components. So we have a new video cable. We have our USB harness, which also has, I believe, backup camera capability. Yeah, front camera, rear camera. We already have cameras installed in the F30, so we're just gonna be using the USB. Also have our main harness itself. So this is the quad lock harness. This is our microphone tap, as some models will require the factory microphone to be tapped into. And last but not least, it appears we have a GPS or radio antenna. Not quite sure, but we'll get that installed as well. So that is everything included with the Motive Supplies MMI. Without any further ado, let's pull the F30 in the garage here and get to tearing it apart. First and foremost, as with any electrical work, it's a good idea to pop the trunk, remove our battery access door right here, and using a 10 millimeter socket, we'll remove the negative battery terminal right here by loosening this nut right here. We'll disconnect this battery terminal. I just put a microfiber applicator pad under there. You can use any sort of rag just to separate that and make sure it doesn't make connection. And as Brian at Keys Motorsports always teaches us, it's a good idea to take a dirty microfiber and just tie it around the trunk latch so that we can't get locked out of our trunk. At this point we're now ready to begin disassembling inside the car here using a plastic pry tool. We'll pry underneath the dash trim right here. Now we have to disconnect the hazard button and the door lock and temperature control. The easiest way I've found to do this is pop out the center button assembly right here. Press down on the little tab, disconnect this button, we'll set it aside, and we have one more connection right here. Disconnect that and we can set the entire assembly aside. Now it's a good idea to take a large microfiber, cover up your center console area here. We are going to be pulling things in and out and you don't really want to scratch up your shifter or any of the trim around here. So we'll just try to protect this as best we can. Now using a T20 Torx bit, we'll remove two Torx screws at the top of the head unit right here. And before we can pull this out, we'll take our plastic pry tool once again, remove this little trim piece down below. There is one little illumination light. We'll disconnect that and set this aside. Two more T20 Torx screws at the bottom. 
And while we're here, there are two more Torx screws. These are the final two T20s. They're up top and they hold the navigation screen in place. We'll remove those right now. Those two last screws out. As you just saw, this control panel just came off on its own after removing those two Torx screws. You do have one connection right here. Disconnect that and we can set this assembly aside. At this point, you may be wondering, Jake, where the heck are we gonna put that big black box? Well, we're definitely not putting it anywhere around here. Luckily, don't panic, there is a nice little cavity right here behind this dash section, which will comfortably house our MMI box. Before we can do that, we have to pull the head unit, the screen, and the glove box. We'll pull those three pieces out and we'll get going with our wiring. We already removed the two torque screws holding the screen in, so the screen will just pop up at this point. We don't have to remove it quite just yet, but we do have to remove four more torque screws here to pull out the head unit. And there's a series of torque screws holding in the glove box. Pardon my messy glove box. Pretty sure everyone has napkins in their glove box. I mean, if you don't, I feel like you're, you're playing a pretty risky game there. Good to always have some napkins. But anyways, we have four Torx screws along the top of the glove box right here. These are also all T20. However, you wanna hold off on those top four screws until we've come down and removed the airbag. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we'll remove two nuts, one right here and one over here just behind the little cigarette lighter. Now we can take a plastic pry tool, pry this plastic cover down. By disconnecting the footwell light and that 12 volt outlet, we can easily remove this entire piece, which reveals our airbag here. By removing the two T30 Torx screws, one right here and one on the other side, the airbag will drop down. You can disconnect it or just allow it to hang out here. It shouldn't be in the way too much at all. At this point, we have four T20 Torx screws along the bottom. Then we can remove the top four and pull out the glove box. There is one more Torx screw. You have to take our plastic pry tool, pry up this little trim piece right here. And hopefully I can show you right there. There is one more Torx screw. And just like that, the glove box should pop out like so. Could just leave this dangling, but I don't want the tension on these wires. So we're gonna disconnect these wires, pull out the glove box, and we'll have full access to behind the dash here. The glove box removed. You can now see the little cavity. We're gonna put our MMI right in here. Should fit quite nicely. You can now pull out our head unit, start disconnecting wires, and start connecting all those wiring harnesses included with the MMI. Now there are a couple different variations of the iDrive system. This system here, I believe is the NBT system. There's CICI, NBT, Evo, and I believe one more version. Being a 2012, this is a pretty early generation F30. Um, actually, the, actually the first year they were offered. This does have one of the older iDrive systems. The older iDrive systems are the CICI and the NBT system. I believe this is NBT. And for those two older systems, you usually do need to tap in to the factory microphone right here and run an aux cord through the center console to our aux plug here under the armrest. A helpful way to tell if you'll need this or you won't need this additional cable is if you have an aux port and a USB port under your armrest, you will likely need the cable. If you only have an aux port, you may not need the cable. So you can proceed with the installation and test once we're done to see if your microphone and speakers are working. I'm 99% sure we're gonna need these additional cables. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how those cables are added. First step, pop the armrest open, take a plastic pry tool, and pry up our iDrive trim right here. Unplug the iDrive controller, set this aside. Now pop up the gear shift trim. And now using a pick tool, we'll remove the multifunction button panel right here. This step can be a little bit tricky, but as long as you stick with it, be gentle and use a little pick tool, you should be able to release the two clips, one on either end. Here's one clip and the other is right here. Now using our T20 Torx, once again, we'll remove two T20 Torx screws. At this point, we should be able to pop up the entire assembly, rock it back and forth and pull it on out. 
So, at this point, we have a pretty straight shot of pulling this male aux cable, 3.5 millimeter aux cable, from the main wiring harness down through the center console and over to our aux port right here. We just have a short little section right here that we have to shoot. I grabbed myself a metal coat hanger from the closet and I bent a little loop at the end to pull the wire on through. From here, we'll just pull up a little tray that actually houses these two little ports. We'll stick our coat hanger through here. It'll pop out over there and we'll pull our aux cable right up on through. And boom, just like that. Got our wire run through the center console. And as you can see, I actually didn't even need to do any filing. Just ran the cable outside of this little trim piece, snapped back down into place, and we have our aux plugged in. So we can go ahead and reinstall the center console trim as we removed it. Then we'll move on to running our microphone cable across the dash and up to our factory microphone, which is right here. So with our aux taken care of, we can now focus on the microphone. I'm gonna start by pulling down some of the weather stripping here all the way up to about the point of the microphone, go a little bit past it, and that'll allow us to easily get under this piece right here. As we did on the passenger side, we're gonna take a plastic pry tool, pop off this little access panel, and we're gonna use that coat hanger once again to pull a wire through. We'll start over here, we can pull out the head unit and begin feeding it in by hand, down underneath the steering wheel and removing two more 10 millimeter nuts allows us to pop this panel down. So it'll be a two step process. We'll pull the wire in over from the dash underneath the steering wheel and then we'll pull it up through this access panel right here, run it up along the A pillar and up to our microphone. And just to clarify which wire it is we're pulling through, it's the one that's labeled AD mic cable. It has a 3.5 millimeter male connector on one end and on the other end, it has BMW microphone connectors, which you're gonna plug into the microphone. Now that I'm thinking about it, actually, it probably makes more sense to plug it in up here and then feed the wire down because we don't wanna have to pull all four of these connectors through the dash and up there. I'd rather take just this one connector and feed it down over to the head unit. So the factory microphone just pops right out of the ceiling. You can use a plastic pry tool. It has one side with a notch, one side with two clips pop it down, that reveals the factory connector. As you can see, I'm using the coat hanger once again to pull the four connectors through, and we'll get them hooked up to the microphone. Also, side note, it's a good idea to run your wires over the airbag here, as opposed to underneath. That way, if it ever has to deploy, the airbag won't be interfered with by a wire. So there it is all hooked up. You'll only use one female and one male connector. There are two different style connectors here just to work with all ranges and models. So you can see we have the factory microphone plugged into our adapter into one of the male connectors. And we have the factory microphone connector coming from the car plugged into one of the female connectors right here. So from here, we just have to stuff this stuff back up in the ceiling, get our microphone tucked back in and we'll run this 3.5 millimeter wire down the A-pillar, through the dash, and over to the head unit. All right, at this point, I have both wires fed through and they're popping out over here in the passenger footwell area. We have those set up. The last thing is our antenna. So our GPS antenna here. The most critical thing is that you don't stick this to metal for interference purposes. And this might not be the most conventional spot, but I stuck it to the bottom of this air vent. It's a nice little hidden spot, and this is all plastic. So we should get good reception out through the windshield here. Just have that stuck on there. We'll run that wire down once we're getting back to installing this guy. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to start plugging things into our MMI box. All we have to do is set our dip settings. So our dip switches here, as you can see, we have eight dip switches. Because of my model year and my configuration with the bigger screen, I have my first three switches set to on and the rest are off. Actually, good thing I pulled up the dip match here. I just wanted to show you guys the dip map um, to show you which switches need to be on or off based on your situation. And it seems actually here, because I'm using their microphone extension cable, I need to switch number eight on. So there we are. One, two, three, and eight are turned on, and we can start plugging stuff in. But first, I am gonna run our new video cable up to the screen. 
Basically what we're doing is we're taking the original video cable, plugging it into the MMI box, and then this new cable here is gonna run from the MMI box up to the screen. So we'll pop our screen out, and there's not a ton of slack here, but we should be able to turn the screen around. We'll unplug this video cable right here. That one will go to our MMI box, and we'll take the new cable and run it up to the screen and plug it in. Now for the main harness itself, we need to flip this big black latch backwards, pop it open, and that will force this connector out from the factory head unit. For those of us with the optical connection, which is these two wires right here, a black wire and a green wire, we need to take a pick tool, pop the little clip loose that's holding these two wires in, remove the optical cable from the factory connector. Now we'll take our new harness from Motive Supplies, we'll take the male end, we'll look at these two holes right here on the end, take our connector, plug it in just as it was before, make sure that clips in, open up the latch, plug this new connector into the factory head unit, and latch it down, make sure it locks into place. Now I'll take the factory male connector that we just unplugged, and we'll plug it into the new mode of supplies connector. Just get that plugged in, lock it down with the latch. With our new harness installed, we can now reinstall the head unit. We just have to tuck all these wires back here. And we can now reinstall the four T20 Torx screws. We can now install this control panel here, which as you'll recall is just one connection over on the right side. Plug that back in, get this lined up, and install our four T20 Torx screws. And while we're here, we may as well also reinstall our two screws that hold in the display. And plug back in this little light right here, reinstall this trim piece, and we'll run this antenna cable down through the dash over to our MMI. Plug the lock back in and also plug in our hazard. Again, it's helpful if you pull the hazard wire through the dash piece, plug it in, and reinsert the button assembly. Now we can pull the rest of the slack through for the antenna and reinstall the dash trim. All right, we are back the following day now. Things were getting a little late last night and I didn't really want to rush through it. So I saved the last of it for today. All we really have to do at this point is get our MMI box plugged in and reconnect the battery, put the glove box in, and hopefully we'll be set to go. But before we toss the glove box back in, I do want to just get the MMI plugged in and plug in the battery, do some testing before we get the glove box back in there, just in case we have to mess with any wires. At this point, all we really have to do is plug this thing in. So the only slightly confusing connectors, which really isn't confusing at all because they're nicely labeled, is we have two identical connectors here for the display. The LVDS in is gonna be the connector coming from our head unit. The LVDS out is the new video cable that we ran up to the display. And thankfully, Motive Supplies did color code these. So you know this is the factory connector, the purple one, and our new one is this kind of teal turquoise color. So we'll get this guy plugged in right here, our new cable into the out port, the CAN power plug right here, our antenna connector, and last but not least, the USB and camera connection. By the way, quick side note, Keys Motorsports has a great video on how to add in a backup camera if you're looking to do that. And just like that, she is all wired up. So we'll just tuck it in here loosely for now. Go plug in the battery and give her a test. Alrighty, let's see what happens here. Okay, so we do still have our iDrive on here, which is a good sign. Oh, look at that, CarPlay, holy smokes. So I just held down on, let me grab the camera. Look at that guys, we have, so I just did a long hold on the number eight button right here. You long hold, that's how you toggle back and forth between iDrive and CarPlay. So I'll do it again here, just hold down on eight, switches over, and we have this mode of supplies menu screen here, which has CarPlay, AirPlay, wired auto, auto link, USB, camera, YouTube, and exit. So I think we're gonna wanna go to CarPlay and connect mobile device. 
start search. I do recall seeing that we need to disconnect the, uh, the BMW Bluetooth. So I'm gonna forget my BMW Bluetooth connection. Go down to CarPlay. Look at that. Pair. Use CarPlay. I think we're good to go. Oh, look at that. Look at that, folks. We have CarPlay on the F30 display. All right, so we'll go down to the main menu here. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. That is way too cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. Just went through and tested a couple of things, including the speakers. Played some copyrighted music, so I couldn't show you that, but the sound system works perfectly as it did before. I just tested the microphone with Siri, which is really cool. You can hold down this button right here and it'll activate Siri. So that is super cool. Siri's getting confused because there's no cell service. Oh, something went wrong. Yeah. Please try again. Yeah. There's no cell service in the garage here. So we can't really test too much, but everything seems to work really well. You have everything you could want on here from your messages, your phone, to Spotify, Waze, Google Maps, all that good stuff. So I am super stoked with this. It looks amazing and I can't wait to use this functionality on a daily basis. I also found out you can switch between the iDrive and CarPlay by holding down the menu button here. That also toggles between the two. So really easy to switch between them. If you need to get to your iDrive quickly, you just hold down the menu button, boom, you're there. So honestly, like this is the best of both worlds. This is awesome. So at this point, <laughs> our passenger footwell is still torn apart. So we're gonna get the MMI box kind of stuffed in there a little bit more neatly and more securely. I might add some padding if necessary and we'll get our glove box and airbag reinstalled, which I am gonna unplug the battery for. It's a good idea to have your battery unplugged just for the final reassembly and uh, we'll be all set. All right, just wrapped up the install, glove box is all back in, and I just found out something pretty important to know about the Apple CarPlay system. If you have the parking sensors or parking cameras, if this button and light is on, you will not be able to access the CarPlay even by holding this down. You have to turn off the parking sensors and then it'll go right back to CarPlay. I think that's a safety feature of sorts and also it needs to be running on the iDrive side to be showing the cameras and sensors. So that makes sense. Just don't freak out if your CarPlay doesn't work while you're backing up or using your parking sensors. I don't know if it's flickering in the footage here, but um, it's not flickering in real life. It just looks like that on the camera because of the frame rate. But <clears throat> all in all, pretty good brightness on full brightness here. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up this video on the Motive Supplies CarPlay MMI install on our BMW F30 here. This process should be applicable to pretty much any BMW 2012 through 2018, I believe. Don't take my word for it, but I'm pretty sure you can do this on any BMW with the infotainment system. Um, with the screen on it. All in all, I am super impressed with this kit from Motive Supplies. Um, the installation was not nearly as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. And I hope with this video, you guys feel confident and inspired to take on this job yourself. I'm sure anyone can do it at home in just a couple hours with some very minimal tools and uh, the results are definitely worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on JD Cars. Mm -hmm.